Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa, a laboratory for paleoclimatology, and also with Carleton University, Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. I just happened to be reading uh, through the Siberian Times online, and there's lots of interesting stuff. This is Monday, July 3rd. The Yenisei began life with a groan and ended with a boldness we could never dream of. Chekhov. I have no idea what that means. But anyway, if you glance through here, you see some interesting titles. Butterfly invasion in Siberia. Right? So Siberia is getting so warm, butterflies are invading. Um, life expectancy in a couple places bad, probably industrial pollution. You know, a lot of interesting stories. Schizophrenic rats. Um, a cloned Siberian puppy meeting its mom. This is neat. The Russians are doing sea tests with white whales for military purposes in Arctic waters. Uh, what else do we have here? Born in Siberia, an 800-year-old Arctic boy. Um, a mummy was found. The voice of Siberia. There we go. Siberians mark the end of the snow season with swimsuits skiing day really okay so anyway don't get distracted by this stuff you know cut to the chase this looks like a big crater two new craters on the yamal peninsula big bang and pillar of fire as latest of two new craters form this week in the arctic so that's what we really want to have a look at let's talk about that here so here we go big bang and pillar of fire Two new craters form, and an eyewitness saw this happening. So here's a crater. A local reindeer herder saw, saw, saw witnessed the tundra explosion that led to birth of New Holland River. So let's have a look. Eight meters in diameter, 20 meters deep. Meters about 3.3 feet. So this is about, this is about 26.4 feet by about uh, 66 feet deep. Okay, so it's a pretty big crater. You'd ha imagine the force required to blow all of the material out. Okay, uh, the latest, this one was created on the 28th of June, so very, very recently. The eruption was picked up by seismic sensors, so it caused, it shook the whole ground, an explosion, it shook the whole ground. Um, so they've got these seismic sensors to monitor these events because they do a lot of drilling there for natural gas. So. So uh, they're, they're very concerned, uh, you know, if they drill to the wrong spot, that it can destroy all their equipment and stuff. So there's, uh, th these are some pictures up here of them. Um, this has been happening in recent years. It says there's four other big ones in recent years, dozens of small ones, and uh, we'll get into that and have a look at it. Now, the, both of these craters, there was an explosion followed by fire. So I'm, okay, so this is, um, eyewitness, you know, people are wondering, is the methane, are the methane clathrates thawing? And then the gas expands, that pressure builds up underneath and just blows out the funnel? Um, or does the methane somehow ignite? Does it ignite and blow out the funnel or does it ignite? I mean, you need oxygen for combustion. So does the methane in high concentrations come out of the earth, hit the oxygen, ignite? Is it of such high pressures? in the earth that it auto ignites? Okay, these are lots of questions. So the people in this village, Sayaka village, heard a loud explosion like bang and saw fire, clouds of black smoke. Okay, um, here, a uh, flame of fire, rising pillar of smoke. So here's the village. Here's where we're located in Sayaka. Okay, this, these are, um, so this is a new funnel. This is a new funnel or crater. And these are the four existing there, there's f1 f2 f3 f4 are some pre-existing craters um so what else do we have here okay so this is an indication of sort of the landscape of the area let me just show you if you go to google earth and you type in sayaka search for sayaka village siberia you get to here now i need to go out a bit and let's see where we are so here we are on the um, on, you know, a lot of, on the Yamal Peninsula, just go out so you can see where we are roughly here. Okay, so this is the Arctic here, this is Siberia, um, Scandinavia, Greenland up here, 
you know, zeroing in here on the Yama Peninsula, the Kara Sea here. Okay, so we'll just keep zooming in and look at this region here. Okay, so very flat, meandering uh, rivers. Look at all of these lakes, all of these lakes and things. Notice they're all, they're all circular features. Okay, so what, um, you know, I think it's pretty clear that over time, look at them all circular. Okay, so this was all pushed down and this was under a few kilometers of ice, the end of the last ice age, during the peak of the last ice age. The ice started melting <coughs> and it looks like if it was, it looks like as it melted and relieved pressure, there was a lot of methane released in these various uh, explosions creating these craters which would then quickly fill in with water. I mean, it's amazing how all, all of this whole region is pocked with circular features. So let's get back to our, let's get back here. Okay, so it's pretty rocky. This looks like ice here. Okay, ice here. Good Siberian soldier here, it looks like bunch of other people looking. There's pieces of ice around in this region. Very rugged terrain. This is like some sort of almost like a pingo type feature forced up, although it's very, very rocky. Okay, so F1 on the map was the Yamal funnel. Um, F2 was more recently detected. F3 and F4, also fairly large craters. Okay, so on the new craters, 28th of June, there was a short but mighty fire around 1025. Okay, maybe his watch was off by half an hour because seismic sensors measured this just after 11 a.m. on June 28th. Okay, um, he had a camp there. There was fire smoke and huge chunks of soil flying out of the epicenter. The, okay, so there was a hill that was blown apart basically. Um, I guess this is the reindeer herder. Um, this looks like a chunk of permafrost because it looks like it's got, it's, it's a chunk of ice and rock embedded all together. Maybe that was blown out of the crater. Um, there's all of this debris here. This is all exposed. So presumably it was, this photo was taken just after it was created. This was jumped, you know, I don't know if the crater filled with water here or, or what happened. These, you know, more ice and very rugged terrain here in this region. Um, this is, so this is a new funnel, you know, up in, I, whether it's this region here or on behind here, it's not really clear from this image. There was helicopter reconnaissance showing the crater appearing in a river. Okay, so it's probably this feature here and it filled in with water. Um, Okay, there's more images from another view of the permafrost and the, you know, ice wedges, whatever's in the permafrost blown up out of the crater. Okay, so the eye, and this, this is like uh, exposed permafrost back here. Uh, presumably this is from the other side of the river and we're looking at the crater here. Okay, some more images. And here we go, uh, you know, more pictures of the crater and so on. So very good, um, very good coverage I find in the Siberian times. Now there's another new funnel, eight meters in diameter, 20 meters deep, classic crater shape. Again, reindeer herders saw an explosion, heard an explosion, saw flames of fire. The, the snow was on the ground, so this one happened a, f you know, a few months ago. It was examined during an expedition recently, and there's a video here, which for some reason doesn't show up, but this is showing uh, another view of this other crater. So there's a person standing here for scale, um, 20 meters wide, deep rather, and um, eight meters in diameter. So that's about 26 feet in diameter or so. Okay, there's another image person, the crater's here. And I guess that's a video that doesn't work. Okay, so this land was absolutely flat two years ago. Then it bulged in 2016. The soil, you could see that the soil had cracked 
and there was an eruption in early 2017. Okay, um, so, and here we go, the seismic uh, network recorded the explosion about 11 o'clock associated with the release of gas, and there were a couple different seismic stations, so they could basically figure out how much energy was involved um, and the timing from the different sensors. And they have these sensors because they fear that erupting funnels can damage key industrial infrastructure. It'd be unfortunate if you had your house sitting on top of one of these sort of things, obviously. Uh, the chances are very low on that. Now, this is the F1, I believe. This is one of the massive ones. Look at the people here for the scale of size. So you get this vertical funnel here, then you get a you know, a funnel tapering effect out here, and then there's an area around the debris field. So this is on the Yamal Peninsula. Okay, so it's underground methane that's believed to form, have, the craters are formed when underground methane trapped by permafrost. So the permafrost is like a cork, the methane's underneath, the clathrates melt or thaw, the methane expands, the free gas comes up, all that pressure pushes out the, um, you know, comes to this, pushes out the soils, reaches the air, combines with the oxygen, high concentrations of methane, and it seems to ignite in that case. There's several thousands of these pingos filled with gas, many filled with gas, which could explode forming great craters. Pingos are just dome-shaped mounds over a core of ice. At least 10 have exploded in Siberia in recent years. The largest is 35 meters deep and 40 meters in diameter. So this is about 130, this is about 130 feet in diameter. That's the one, uh, the F1 that I showed you up above. Um, okay, so a couple points here. These are interesting comments. The craters are blasting this year, too fast, too strong. The dragon is not at sleep. How fast will he awaken? Maybe this year, maybe next year. So the earth, we humans are crazy, awakening the dragon, the fire-breathing dragon. So it's rather apt. This person is saying the fire suggests the heat was brought from deep within the earth. Once the venting began, the mixing with oxygen caused the superheated methane to ignite. Okay, so this is an interesting idea. Is that possible, that it was superheated? ignition so let's go on to the review oh this is the sorry this is the uh yes just a little uh comical interlude here siberians mark the end of snow season with swimsuit day this was came out in may so they left it there so it's just everybody skiing in their bathing suit so it doesn't look like it's too cold uh looks like a lot of fun you know, the snow bunnies and the snow dudes, right? What is this, like a Viking? This is like a Cossack Russian hat or something. So there we go. So equal opportunity. You know, the, the, these, these are very gender biased, obviously. You know, you get the one guy and you get 20 pictures. But anyway, oh, there's somebody. Else. Oh, there's a few more guys, token guys there. So, so anyway, a little diversion on the Siberian site. This is a clathrate, methane clathrate. Methane molecules in the center, ice is around the edge, okay? Um, and when this thaws, when, when the ice melts, the expansion is 160 times, that would build up pressure under the ground and uh, probably be the mechanism that uh, pushes out the, uh, so the, the, the soils and stuff. Now, how does the methane ignite? Okay, so, I'm looking at some data here, and uh, okay, so this is the this is at one atmosphere and 26 degrees Celsius. This is the characteristic. So this is the volume percent of methane in the air. Okay, so so the concentration where the curve is the minimum. This is ignition limit. So if you have a spark, how big a spark do you need? Very small spark. It'll ignite here. So just about 8.5% is the most ignitable methane. As you go lower than about 6, it's hard to ignite. As you go higher than about 12, it's hard to ignite. So I'm going to stop here and continue um, in another video.